Well, this is my first and probably last attempt at, at live streaming, and uh, I'm glad you're watching, if you're watching. Uh, this is my last day. I just wanted to take a minute and thank everyone uh, who's been part of uh, the Exeter experience for the last four years. And uh, for some people, it, it goes much beyond that. Uh, but yeah, I've, I'm going to miss everyone an awful lot. And uh, I wanted to make sure everyone heard that, everyone knew that. And um, yeah, so a few things I wanted to say. Uh, one, I got a new T-shirt today called Pivot. Uh, when this whole coronavirus thing happened, start saying, well, we're going to have to pivot and do this, and then something else, and we'll have to pivot and do that. After a few weeks, we found out that pivot is the buzzword of, of this whole uh, pandemic, so it got tiring. We stopped saying it, but, but you know, life is a pivot. Uh, earlier, I had said life is like a roller coaster. You know, there's no steering wheels. There's a lot of ups, a lot of downs. But God laid the tracks, and he's in control. Uh, life is also full of pivoting. And, and so we can look at the changes in life and regret them. Uh, we can look at the changes in life and remember a, a simpler time, a better time, uh, at least based on our memories. But we are where we are. And, uh, and, and pivoting changing is something that I think we're all going to have to do. I, I am, again, going to miss everyone. I will be continually praying for all of you, uh, and I'm expecting big things. You know, I, I was talking to someone about the coronavirus, of all things, and said, you know, when we couldn't go to church, it's kind of like playing chess without a queen. If, if you're a chess uh, aficionado, you know that if you really want to get good at chess, you start playing people, but you take your queen off. And, and it makes you use all the other pieces much more effectively because you can't rely on that big piece. Well, when we went through the coronavirus, we, the queen was the church. So how do you do church without the physical building? And I think I am proud of, of what we together as the body of Christ we're able to do here at Exeter. A lot of things went on, and uh, if you were here for the, uh, uh, the first drive-in service we had on Pentecost Sunday, we went over some of those things. I'm very proud of you guys. Uh, that was awesome. The challenge is uh, there's a new thing to pivot on, and how are you going to do church now? And, and so there's a few things to kind of think of. What does God want you to grow through in this latest pivot, if you will? And, and, and so how are you going to grow personally? And then how can we help the church to grow? You know, uh, I was thinking through the book of John. And uh, if you talk to Kevin Denlinger, he'll tell you it's my favorite book. I'm not sure if it is, but if it isn't, it's pretty close. Uh, and, and he'll tell you, John 17, Jesus' prayer, when, when he should have been concerned about himself and he was only concerned about his disciples and us, uh, is beautiful. But what made me think, and, and I've thought this numerous times, but what God's put on my heart is, you know, Jesus, the night he's betrayed, washed the feet of not just the disciples, he washed Judas' feet. Why would you do that? And so, you know, if you've been coming to service, I'm always saying, you know, we have to be loving. We have to be caring. You know, when you're on Facebook, don't be angry like everyone else. I, I, I think my challenge was too low. It shouldn't just be how can I not be angry like everyone else. How can I wash the feet of people who might betray you, who might not like you, who might think you're ridiculous, not just tolerate, wash. And so what does that mean? I have no idea. So it's probably going to take me a few weeks, a few months of praying and thinking. And, and this new piece of, uh, of life experience, this new thing on the news, how do I act like Jesus towards Judas? 
in, instead of acting just, I'll hold my tongue. Uh, so that's what's convicting me. I don't know about you, but think about I Don't just read the Bible. How does God want pieces to be applied to your life? That's what I think God has put on my heart. You don't have to have the same thing, but what is God putting on yours? And process it. Don't, don't take the quick way out. Take the good way out, and that is to get through it, understand what God would have for you. As a church, I'll leave you with... Uh, uh, a famous passage, Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. And if I can read it here, there we go. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hmm. He who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day draw near. Here's the writer of Hebrews, and he's saying how to stir one another up to love and good works. You know, think of it, there are things that I can say that may be true, but does it stir you up to love better and to do more good works, to do those good works better? That, that should be my goal. I leave that as a challenge for the church. How are you going to encourage one another to love and good works. And then it says, don't forsake the assembling of, your other, of each other, but encourage one another. And even more as you see the day approaching. Here, a lot of people thinking, oh, with all the things going on, man, the end times are, are upon us. Maybe. Uh, the writer of Hebrews said this almost 2,000 years ago. They're definitely closer now. They may be here they may not, but whether they are or not, uh, how do we encourage one another? Well, the easy way, come to church, encourage one another. That's a start. Get on the phone, get on whatever it is, but encourage one another. And not just encourage one another, how you doing? Yeah, hang in there. Encourage one another to love and good works. So again, the four years I've been in here, uh, made some friends I will remember you always, I, I also know there's going to be times where things are going to come up and it's going to remind me of something and it's probably one of you. And uh, know that you're deeply loved. He will be prayed for. And uh, we will see each other again.